but they're building the concepts gradually. And thinking about math logically takes a while to, 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 to get used to. And, but but the, the results are far reaching. The students are themselves don't get to be scared of math because now they can think. They know that it invites them to think too. Uh -huh. And that is why I find that some smart students even, here in the US state, uh, system, some smart students do well in simple questions like find the slope of the line uh, that passes through the points two, three, and five, eight. They can do it. But put it to them in a word, word problem form? format. And they feel like, I, I hate story I, problems. No, no. I, even me, when I was in high school, I hate thing. that. That's the thing. You know I why that is? Hate you know it. why that is? Because you've seen it as just a set of rules. It's like a game to you. But when they try to expand it to real life situation, you cannot take what you've learned and use it as a tool for real life situation. And that's showing there a lack of logical reasoning mm -hmm or concept building in that topic. And if you remember, you know physics in high school, physics is just like that. Exactly. Like, they tell you this a guy travel at the velocity of right. meter per hour, so how many will he travel in this distance? Exactly. It took and me a while for me to, to get used to it. And, and we were taught, especially when we were preparing, say, for uh, the YAC, right? We are looking at these questions, these past questions, and we're thinking, what's the go-to method? We never stop to think, how do we think about this? And what I teach the SAT students at, uh, in the SAT math prep is this. When they see a question, one of the ways you can easily approach it is to think, what topic is being tested? And if I know the SAT as I do, it's sometimes three things they're testing in one question. Now, of granted, they're not, they may be, they may be uh, a reference to percent. They're not so really that's they're, how you solve mathematics? Yeah, they're, because especially when it's word problems. Like you, you remind, sorry to cut, you remind me of what Kobe said. Okay. You know, when he was, when he was injured mm. and he was trying to rehabilitate himself back to, you know, Full health. He said he breaks down all those is a uh, therapy session okay. into like a simple steps. Like okay, let me handle this. If I handle this, yeah. I go to the next level. Right, because like right. you now, you see mass question first. You read okay, which first thing that comes to your mind under which topic, topic is, is it test exactly? Because the thing is, if you get in the minds of the examiners, they want to test your knowledge of something, right? We want to know if you know this, right? So does it make sense? If they're asking you a question that belongs in a particular context, a.k.a. topic, and you're thinking in line of another topic. And so that, that's the thing. And there are lots of topics to cover. So when, for example, when it's a word problem, um, there are some word problems that lead to, to a linear equation. There are word problems that lead to quadratic equations. There are word problems that lead to system, the system of linear or quadratic equations. All right? And so whatever the, the, the word problem leads to, it's your job to understand from the context of the question, is this going to lead to a system of equations? Is this just a, a, a slope intercept form equation? Uh, is this quadratic? Do you understand? It is understanding and pinpointing that that directs you on how to solve it. All right, so because those topics are actually tools that you have been given to answer questions like that. So it doesn't help when you see the question not to reflect back on those topics and think of them as tools to help you with solving the problem. So is it possible for, for a student to see a question and he couldn't, he can categorize or figure out which, under which topic he falls? It's possible. And at the same time for him to still be able to Yes. Answer the question correctly. Yes. Yes. It's possible. It is. It is possible. Whether it's SAT, whether it's GMAT, even it's possible. Here's why: because you th you, first of all, math is not math as a subject doesn't necessarily have to be split into topics. It's split into topics to help our minds to be able to take the diverse nature of it. All right. So there are people who can read a question and or let me say it's possible to read a question and to say that I could solve this, I could solve this problem based on my mental 
and computational ability. Okay. You understand? And in some cases even, I, I dare say that you could do some of those questions even mentally without putting pen to paper. It's possible. You understand? So how do you think? But, but to help a student who may struggle with word problems, mm -hmm. the safer method is to think what tool or what topic has been taught that I could use or employ to solve this problem. Because in the end, it's, it's your knowledge of that topic that is being tested anyway. How do you think? How do I think? Yeah. What do you mean, how do I? All right. Uh, you mean, how do I process yeah. math problems or just generally? Both. OK. Um, it's a broad question, how do I think? Um, I wouldn't say I think a yoga pose. <laughs> but I would say that I would say that thinking for me, um, I feel like I'm blessed mentally to be able to process, take in information, process it, and verbalize it in expressing it. Uh, so when I th when I think about something, especially when it's a broad topic, I also like it when it's a sensational topic, maybe a trendy topic, for example. I like to look at different sides of it, understand the different perceptive, uh, perspective of it, and understand where different people's different interests, you know, comes into it. But understanding different positions is not necessarily so I can take it, pick a side, which is what I find most people do. But I, I want to understand and to be able to relate so that if I have to speak to people of you know, different interests on that topic, I know just where they're coming from, all right? Um, and and it's, it's not, it's not um, different from the mode of the early Christians in preaching to different people. Paul said to the, to the Jews who became as a Jew, to the Gentiles as a Gentile, so that we can reach them. You know, so it's something that, he said, to all of this, to, we, we become everything to everybody. Now, it's not because we want to be du duplicitous. No, it's because we want to empathize more. Jesus became us. Do you understand? God made him who, know, who knew no sin to become sin so that we, mm -hmm. being the beneficiary of his death and resurrection, may become the righteousness of God through him. And if Jesus would come from his high position, to take to be to take our place too. I mean, it's incumbent on us also to do the same for people like oh, that, gosh. our fellow man, to understand different and to empathize too. You know, pe when 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 disasters happen in different places, when countries are falling apart, and we hear stories of that, our heart breaks. We want to we 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 know what horrors will be faced with people like that. You know, and sometimes a word of prayer is the best we could do. Sometimes we could probably give a relief fund to, to help their causes. But thinking is a, I think it's, it's part of being alive, really, because you are processing things that are around you and expressing them also. I mean, expressing your thoughts of the, on these things, you're contributing to the discussion of it in a bit to better things because we usually pursue peace, uh, unity amongst men and all of that. Uh, but when it comes to math, the beauty about it is it's people think about math differently from life. It's, it is different from life. Yes, there are aspects of life that you couldn't put in the context of math. I acknowledge that. But not many things. Not many things. You, you you ask Siri now what the weather is tomorrow, and it, you you hear uh, it's, it's it's forty five it's forty five yeah. degrees tomorrow with a twenty percent chance of rain. Mm -hmm. What a twenty percent chance of rain? What does that mean? Probability. That's math. Do you understand? Yeah. Uh, you you look at the stock exchange. You see uh, the Dow Jones, or maybe a stock yeah. you're interested in has risen certain percent. Yeah, math. that's still percentage. Yeah. Used in one sense as probability, used in another sense as a, as a percent increment, percent change. You see, it's math is prevalent, but the pro the problem is when we, we when we think about math, we're only thinking about grade scores, 
And that is what pro- pro- produces that mental block. Oh, I remember the bad, bad grade I had. Oh, I was sitting in a test and I didn't know what was the, the test was saying. And that's the memory we have of math. And we forget the various other ways math is yeah. around us and how we even excel in them. Yeah. You go to the store, for example. You, you see, buy. You see, you see oranges, five for $2. Oh, that's yeah. a good deal. How do you know it's a good deal? Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. You've done the math in yeah. split seconds too. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. And you didn't know you've just done ratios. You've just completed a course in ratios yeah. right there. As a matter of fact, no, not just ratios. That's even rates. <laughs> because rate, rates is what? Ratios of two quantities or of different units. Okay. So on the one hand, you have five oranges, two dollars. Mm-hmm. Oranges, dollars. Mm-hmm. Different units. Right? You compare the value because... With five oranges at two dollars, you could work out what's called the unit price. The price for one for orange. One. Yeah. Do you understand? That's unit rate. Yeah. So in that singular contest, you've, you've, I could actually discuss with you rate ratios, uh, proportions even. 